Hello everyone, welcome to New Hope Church Online. My name is Steve. We are so thankful that you tuned in to be a part of our online church family today. We have a great service planned for you. Pastor Jeff continues his message series entitled, Never a Day Without. If you'd like more information about New Hope, visit our website at www.newhopeconnect.org. So now let's come together to sing, pray, and hear from God's Word. Welcome to New Hope Church Online. Well, here we are, online worship this second Sunday, this second weekend of November. Uh, we're recording this before we know the results of the election, but by now we hopefully know the results of the election, and uh, we just keep praying. I want to ask you a question. How long is the Lord's Prayer? Well, we know it's not that long, but it is long. And as we have said many, many times here, we don't even remember learning how to pray it when we're little children, if we grow up in the church. Even if we don't grow up in the church, we usually end up learning how to pray it without realizing we've learned how to pray it. And then we pray it throughout our whole lives, and we know that on the lips of many people, as they bring or get close to their last breath, they're praying the Lord's Prayer. It is a long prayer. Another question for you. How short is each presidential election? Four years. Four years. So we know that the Lord's Prayer was with us long before this presidential election. It's going to be with us long after this presidential election. So together, let's put our hands together and pray the Lord's Prayer. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today, during the message, we're going to be thinking about God's long hand. God's long hand. So let's uh, prepare ourselves to do some worship. The, one of the songs that we get to uh, begin our worship with is You Keep Hope Alive. Days may be darkest but your light is greater, you light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, will you rise in higher with power to save, with power to save? Are alive. 
can't go back to the beginning can't control what tomorrow will bring but I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again as I walk now through the valley let your love rise above every fear like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness your glory Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? The Lord is in this place The Lord is in this place Come Holy Spirit Dry bones awaken The Lord is in this place The Lord is in this place Unless you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? The Lord Jesus, trusting only Thee, trust.
Trust in Thee for full salvation, great and free. I am trusting Thee to guide me, Thou alone shalt supplying all my need. I am trusting Thee for power, Thine can never fail. Words which Thou Thyself shall give me must prevail I will trust I will trust I will trust you with my life I will trust I will trust, I will trust you with my life. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust you with my life. Oh, I will trust, Lord, I will trust, I will trust. In Thee, Lord Jesus, never let me fall. And I am trusting Thee forever and for all. I will trust, I will trust. I will trust you with my life. Lord, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust you with my life. to start today's message off entitled uh, God Long Hand with the picture of the taking hand that we've been looking at. As you look at the picture of this taking hand, I want you to just realize that it is a short taking hand. Again, when our hand is outstretched, it's longer, but when it's taking, it's always shorter. We're going to read some Bible passages, quite a few today, um, about uh, the people of uh, God's people in the nation of Israel once they came out of Egypt, but they're in the wilderness. They're, we're going to see how they were in the wilderness for two months and then for two years and then for 40 years. And during much of that, there is grumbling and complaining. In the story, we're going to see grumbling and complaining. And we're all going to, also going to see about the manna and the meat, how God feeds them with manna and meat. But before we get to that, just let's for a moment take a look at the nail-scarred hand of Jesus 
And notice how long it is. Notice how long it is in size. Again, when we look at that taking hand, uh, it, it's, uh, the hand of Jesus is longer than that taking hand. And also just be thinking about the time. How long is the time that Jesus' hand is over us, over this world, how it continues to serve uh, all these thousands of years of existence. And now let's take a look at the two hands uh, together. That hand of Jesus, how long it is, and that taking hand. And you can see right there, just from size-wise, how the hand of uh, Jesus is so much longer. And that, knowing that that taking hand, all of our taking hands eventually end. They come to rest where the long hand of Jesus never comes to an end. So let's be, uh, we're going to be thinking about God's people and we're going to see in God's people, even though they're God's people, that they have these short taking hands. There's grumbling, there's complaining, they want manna, they, they want to meet. Then we're going to look at God's long hand in, there's going to be two months, a, a reference to uh, two months and then a reference to two years and then reference to 40 years. So again, a lot of Bibles uh, this, this day, uh, but I think if we, as we work at it and get to the end of it, it's going to have a wonderful payoff for us as we are where we're at this year in 2020 on this uh, weekend. So from Exodus 16, here's what we read. Uh, they sent out on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel at evening, You shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. And then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation and of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God." And then we read this. In the evening, quail came up, came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, each one of you, as much as he can eat. You shall take an omer according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. Then we read, and the people of Israel did so. They gathered some, some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, again, catch this. Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it over till the morning. 
But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And all the middle school boys said, oh, awesome. It bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning, they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. And then we read, on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you bake and boil what you will boil. And all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning as Moses commanded them. And it did not stink. And there were no worms in it. And all the middle school boys said, oh, bummer. Let's get back to where it stinks and there's worms. Moses said, eat it today for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. But we read, on the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Then we get this kind of footnote here at the end. Now the house of Israel called his name manna. It was like coriander seed, white. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So this is God's long hand. Uh, two months after the Israelites are out of Egypt, God is providing them with food. Some bread in the morning, some meat in the evening. God's long hand is going to feed all of the Israelites. Now we're going to go to another story a couple of years later. Is what we read in Numbers chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. In the second year, in the second month, on the 20th day of the month, the cloud lifted from over the tabernacle of the testimony, and the people of Israel set out by stages from the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. So again, the Israelites are in the wilderness. They're going to be out there for 40 years, but now this is the second year. So they've moved from one location in the wilderness to another location in the wilderness. Now here's what we read in Numbers chapter 11. And we're going to see a pattern here. They're going to go from grumbling to complaining. It looks like from what we read here is that the meat didn't continue. The quails didn't continue to come every evening. The manna continued to come every morning. So it's uh, in two years later. Now here's what we read. And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled. Again, just to remind ourselves always, who is God? He is the Lord, the Lord. He's compassionate and gracious. He's slow to anger. As we read here, he does get anger. But he is always abounding in love and faithfulness. So right there in the middle, he's slow to anger. So we see it here because... God has been providing from his long hand, and they're just taking, 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 and their hands are oftentimes short, and they just don't look to thank and remember all that God has done for them. So the reading here in Numbers 11 goes on. It says, Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving. And the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. And do you ever notice that sometimes when we think back to uh, what happened before this, we call it nostalgia. We oftentimes will remember some of the good things, but what we see that Israelites do over and over, God's people do over and over, they forget all the oppression that they were under in Egypt. 
So they oftentimes we have short memories. We don't have complete long memories. God has a long memory. He knows what he's done for his people. He knows what he's done for us. Even in this year of 2020, how can we see God's long hand? The story that we want to read continues with this. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, and you've got to remember, Moses has been at this for a number of years now, and the people just come at him and at him and at him. So it says, Moses said to the Lord, why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land you, that you swore to give to their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give all this people? For they weep before me and say, give us meat, give us meat, give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, and he's going to do two things here. He's going to lighten the burden on Moses, and he's going to give the people meat. Then the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting and let them take their stand there with you. And I will come down and talk with you there. And I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, so that you may not bear it yourself alone. And say to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, you and you shall eat meat. For you, will, for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord, saying, who will give us meat to eat? For it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall not eat just one day or two days or five days or ten days or twenty days, but a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you. Because you have rejected the Lord who is among you. And have wept before him saying, why did we come out of Egypt? Again, their memory is short and they know God's long hand has been so gracious to them. And it's going to be gracious to them again. He's going to give them what they want, but it's not what they need. What they need is to know that God is this God with this long hand. And he is working among his people then as he is now. And then this, and this is where we want to uh, uh, focus on why we're looking at God's long hand uh, today. But Moses said, the people among whom I number, who I am, number 600,000 on foot. As if God didn't know that. Moses is reminding him this vast number of people. And usually in the Bible, when we see a number like that, it's counting the men. So if there's 600,000 men, probably would mean that there's 600,000 women. And there's uh, maybe two children, three children, four children per family. So you get up into a, a few million real quick. So these are, everyone has, um, a, a, there is, for all those millions, it's a mouth to feed, a mouth to feed, a mouth to feed. And so Moses said, the people among whom I am number 600,000 on foot. And you have said, I will give them meat that they may eat a whole month? Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them and be enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them and be enough for them? And again, Moses, is, his memory is kind of short here too. God has been feeding them for two years. Every day, every day they're eating their fill of manna and what they need to, to live. And the Lord said to Moses, is the Lord's hand shortened? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. What we are seeing in these first two Bible readings, and there's one more to go, is that God has this long, long hand. 
It started before creation. It was there in Genesis 3 when Adam and Eve fell. It was there through Noah. We know it's there through Abraham and through Isaac and through Jacob and through Joseph and all the 400 years in, in uh, Egypt. And now they're on the other side. They've been on the other side for a couple of years. And God's long plan of salvation is going to continue on through these people. But over and over, as people, we just have these short memories and we forget how long God is and how long he has for us to be in his hands. His hand is not too short. So we know that the people of, uh, of God out there in the wilderness, they are going to get meat. And the abundance of meat that it would take to feed millions of mouths, God's hand is never too short. We want to read that uh, 40 years later in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy in the Bible is Moses kind of reviewing all that has happened in these 40 years and reminding them of what they are about to, to do as they're going to go into the promised land. So here's what we're going to read, uh, uh, our last reading from Deuteronomy chapter 8. It says, The whole commandment that I command you today, shall, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. We hear Jesus saying those words when he is tempted in the wilderness by the evil one. Man does not live by, every, by bread alone, but by, man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. This long word of the mouth. The food that goes in us and passes through us, that's short. But God's long word, oh, we want to feast on that. And then we can, continues on and says, Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Oh, just the vision of those words, and that's where they're going, and God's long hand is going to take them into that promised land. But then this warning, but take care, lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied then your heart will be be lifted up and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and its scorpions and its thirsty ground where there was no water who brought you water out of the flinty rock who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Again, God's long hand over all those 40 years and now God's long hand is going to go with them into this promised land. Again, a few more warnings here, but beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. 
Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so you shall perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. And we're looking at the God's people, oh, the short memories, their short hands taking, 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 but God's long hand of grace, remember me. My long hand of grace is always going to be with you and all the things that can flow out of God's long hand. So last week we were looking at uh, the voice, the voice of Jesus, the shepherd here, this, you know, the voice of the Lord that we just read. And last week we were also looking at the two strong hands that uh, Jesus says, no one can snatch them out of my hand, no one can snatch them out of my Father's hands. We've been thinking about this idea of wise and warm moments with Jesus and they're just long moments with Jesus because of his long, eternal, cosmic, nail-scarred hand. We've been looking at these uh, Bible verses throughout this whole series in Hebrews 12 where it says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. So what are we fixing our eyes on, people? What are we fixing our eyes on? Are we fixing our eyes on what's in our hands, our short-taking hands? God, by his grace, puts a lot into our short-taking hands, especially here in America, in our culture. Again, we all live in wonderful, wonderful homes. They're so safe. We have lots and lots of food, and sometimes we, in our short-taking hand, we know that we eat too much food. We don't sometimes eat the, the food that we should eat, and we eat some of the food that we don't, uh, shouldn't eat, but man, does it taste good, and I, I'm doing that. So we have these short-taking hands, and we've got the, the short-taking hands when it comes to our money, and it, we've got short-taking hands, and sometimes we just focus on what's in our hands, and we forget to focus on Jesus, and sometimes, uh, how do we focus our eyes on the long, nail-scarred hands of Jesus. Because the day is coming for all of us when we're not going to be able to be in our safe homes. We won't be able to continue to eat the safe food, to take our safe medicine. We won't be able to do the things that are in our hands to keep our lives going but as we fix our eyes on Jesus knowing that all the safe things that we have right now in our hands that sometimes we take in good ways sometimes we take in bad ways but we can remember everything comes from Jesus and he wants to us to know that even when some of the things that we think our life are taken from our hands He's not punishing us. He's not angry at us. His long, nail-scarred hand is there for us. So we fix our eyes on Jesus in this long, eternal, cosmic, nail-scarred hand. And then uh, the other Bible verse, uh, just asking these questions. How long is God's kindness to us? How long is God's patience for us? In Romans 2, the riches of his kindness. Oh, the riches of his kindness. <laughs> this is recorded 2,000 years ago. And God's kindness has been with God's people every day since then. And it's with us today. And with the riches of his kindness, his tolerance, and his patience. Oh, God's patience. How long is God's patience for us? Not realizing that God's kindness, again, a second time, his kindness, his kindness, God's kindness, it leads you towards repentance. So let's look at the, the pictures of the hands. Uh, again, look at the, the picture of that letting go hand. How, how it's getting longer than the taking hand. And then how long is that open thinking hand? It's long to receive God's gifts from his long hand. And then, again, once again, we look at the, 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 the nail-scarred hand of Jesus and that taking hand underneath it. And you just notice the size difference. Not just physically. But again, in length of time, there's an eternity in the long, nail-scarred hand of Jesus. In that taking hand, well, we number it in decades, not centuries, right? It's 
Sometimes we have hands that will go 60 years or 70 years or 80 years or 90 years. Sometimes those hands don't even get to 10 years. So our hands are short in time and short in taking. But that long, nail-scarred hand of Jesus. So imagine the long, nail-scarred hand of Jesus and our open, thanking hand. Notice how our open, thanking hand is long in size. But again, maybe not in time. But that doesn't matter because of the hand of Jesus. So we imagine Jesus' long hand in our hand. So the message today is this long hand of God for us. And when we look at that long hand time and time and time again and realize how long it is in this year of 2020, oh, it's been a long year. It has been such a long year. So many of us were so tired of it. We're exhausted from it. It's made us so anxious. It's depressed us. It's done all kinds of horrible things. But we don't look at 2020. Keep looking at God's long hand. And it hasn't left us throughout all the months of this year. And it's not going to leave us these last couple of months. Or as we get into 2021, God's long hand, there's goodness in his hand. So let's uh, join together and sing the goodness of God as we think more about God's long hand for us.
of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. So the goodness of God, long hands, the two strong hands of God, that's what we want to keep thinking about, how long those two strong hands are, not just in size, but in time, in time, in time, in time. So for over 20 some years here at New Hope, we have been saying, and we say it again today, the time of, uh, it just gets longer and longer. We take our hands and Christ in us, the hope of glory. Thanks for watching New Hope Church Online. We hope that you enjoyed today's service. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love for you to consider New Hope Church. You're welcome here. Our address is 1850 American Drive, Nina, Wisconsin, 54956. Or you can reach us by phone or email. And be sure to visit us at www.newhopeconnect.org to learn more or to give online. Have a great week, everyone.